episode 11 of I Can Explain. This video is a continuation of the previous video, Why Do We Have Next, Part 1. In that video, I ended with two questions. One, what would cause an ocean fish to move into a freshwater environment? And two, what adaptations would that fish have to evolve to easily live in different conditions? Um, what would be a good reason for an ocean fish to move into fresh water? Uh, one of the most obvious is to not get eaten. Okay. The ocean is deep, but most sh uh, freshwater streams are very shallow. A big shark just hasn't got the room required to maneuver. So hiding in shallow water is a reasonable answer. So moving on to question two. What adaptations would that fish have to evolve to easily live in different conditions? It would be a gradual move into fresh water, though. Okay. First, the small fish would hide in the intermediate zones between the ocean and fresh water, like these salt marshes. Okay. It is still salty water, but reduced. It's not too difficult to adapt to. Okay. Second, the thing about fresh water is that it only has a small amount of salt, and that's why it's called fresh water. Still, those fish needed to have the salt uh, for their nerves and muscles to function properly, so their bodies evolved a way to store what salt there was available in the fresh water in the food, and they stored the sodium, potassium, calcium, and phosphate in their skeletons. They became bony fish. This coho salmon is a bony fish. It is a good example of that transition. Third, there's an issue, it's about temperature. The shallowness of fresh water streams causes the temperature of the water to change daily. The ocean is deep, and deep oceans don't change temperature at all. The ocean is a nice place to be. The environment hardly ever changes, but fresh water is not like that. Okay? Changing temperatures isn't a big deal, you say? Um, look, this coho salmon swims back and forth. Okay? And true, fish are heterotherms, so a rise in water temperature makes them faster and cooler temperatures slow them down, so not much of a problem. The bigger issue, though, is dissolved gases. Cold water retains more gas than warm water. Let a uh, cup of cold soda pops sit on the counter and warm up, and you'll see all these bubbles form. That is the dissolved carbon dioxide, the soda, being freed from the warming beverage. It becomes warm and flat. Okay. Freshwater does exactly the same thing. Okay. Warm it, and all the dissolved gases leave, oxygen included. The graphs here show gas concentrations on the y-axis and temperature concentrations on the x-axis. Okay. So clearly, with both carbon dioxide and oxygen. Okay. The hotter the water, the less gas it retains. Okay. So on average, fresh water has a lower oxygen concentration than uh, ocean water. As a result, the fish can't get enough oxygen through their gills, and thus they have to take a big gulp of air to survive. Anyone who's had goldfish um, would have seen them do this. They absorb the oxygen through the epithelial linings of their gastrointestinal tract. Okay. So what does this have to do with having flexible necks? Uh, the Tiktaalik rosei was the first vertebrate to show a movable neck. Okay. In this diagram, the Tiktaalik is in the middle, and it is, is showing an intermediate between the head fused to the shoulders and a freely movable head. Okay. Also, 
the shallow water, in being in the shallow water, the head of the tectolic has flattened out horizontally, much like a crocs. So it could easily lift its head above water so that it could take a breath of air without moving the rest of its body. The tetalic showed up about 375 million years ago. You see it right here. Okay. These are the ocean fish, okay, and these are the more freshwater fish up here. Okay. Another thing that this shallow water uh, environment caused was that the fins of the tectolic turned into pods so that it wouldn't get tangled in the debris and the shallow water. And that also caused the development of a pectoral girdle and a pelvic girdle to support those pods. So when you look at the fossil record related to tetrapods, those that moved on to land, and then the fish, you see that the tectolic looks more like a tetrapod than it does a fish. So why do we have vertebrates have flexible necks? It's to take a breath of air. You didn't expect that, did you? The tectolic has a bony skeleton, a flexible neck, the ability to breathe air, and pods. So that makes the first um, your first example of a land vertebrate, and this is an uh, artist image of the tectolic, and it looks a whole lot like a croc, and that's reasonable because they probably lived in similar environments. Okay. So isn't it nice to get to know your uh, ancestors, even if they are 375 million years removed?